if I was to say to you pre-game, there's going to be two teams who are going to play. Mm. One are going to, it's a cup final. Mm. It's pressure filled, bit of rain. One is going to play the way New Zealand play, without calling them New Zealand. One mm. is going to play ball in hand, try and break them down. The other is going to say, away you go. And we'll have 52 rooks. We have a good kicker. Yeah. Who would your life be on? The option two. And like the reason that's not new. That's going on in schools, rugby, club rugby, amateur level rugby. Knockout rugby has almost always been about having a really good strong pack, playing a bit of territory, having a really good kicker. And it's <clears throat> it's just really dawned on me most powerfully in this tournament when you start looking at the stats like um, the, the teams that won most of the knockout games. And it was, you know, it differed. So Ireland, when we beat South Africa, kicked the ball more out of hand and had less possession. So we actually did what South Africa wanted to do to others, but we didn't retain that approach in other games. But that was a a thread which surprised me that ran through the tournament and it just seems to ring true now that in knockout rugby you you kind of touched on it Jerry that does the does the most appealing to watch team win probably not well in all four quarter finals the England South Africa semi final and the final the team that had the most possession that made the most passes that had the most carries most offloads most line breaks like every possible attacking metric bar none lost yeah I mean, I don't know if this is good for the game. Is this good for the game? Are we to conclude it's a rubbish sport? Is that <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree with Andy in that. Sorry, you don't mind calling me Andy. Um, oh, I absolutely agree in that I, I found the final compelling. <laughs> compelling. I yes, really did. Okay. I was really absorbed by it. I mean, I was surprised. One or two of my colleagues came up straight after the full time whistle. It's interesting to me. You just sit in different parts of the press box and you come away with the same match and a very different perspective. Never mind from people back home because it's always a different perspective when you're in the ground than when you're from watching on TV. And some journalists come to me afterwards, was that the worst final ever? And I went, what? No way. It was one of the best. No. I mean, 2007, um, Springboks England. I barely remember anything of that game except Percy Montgomery kicking five penalties, well, whoever, and Mark Quaita's foot brushing the, the touchdown. I will mm. remember a lot of that final. There were a lot of very key moments. The second half particularly was compelling. I mean, South Africa won, but like... And it's largely down to Pollard nailing four from four and nine from nine in the knockout stages and 18 from 18 in Paris going back to 2017. Mm. It's ridiculous. They won with the goal kicker and that's why their approach changed instead of Libok at 10. And that's cup rugby, as you say, no doubt. And Pollard's now won back-to-back World Cups. But, and and Mwonga missed a touchline conversion and Jordy Barrett missed a long-range penalty mm. that on another day either of them might have got and then we'd be hailing the All Blacks as mm. ma- magnificent world champions coming from, you know, 14 men for the, over an hour of the game. And again, there was how much of that in, would, our, would the All Blacks have won with 15 men? Quite likely. But we'll never be sure because I think certainly being there that as so often happens when they went down to 14 men they really then had a go. They just then decided we're going to die with our boots on. And I think it almost freed them up a little bit um, because they, mm-hmm. they were down to 14 men. They could really have a go and they had to keep the ball more. And they did it very well. And if Richie Mwanga's break outside um, Damien de Allende after goose-stepping Aranze and then popping the ball inside Aaron Smith, if that isn't ruled out, we're, we're hitting one of the great 14-men wins in the history of the sport. There was an the ar- margins are so tiny. Ta- yes. 